Okay, Coffee Break Algebra. And this is a new series I think I'm going to uh, start. And I'm going to be combining my two favorite things in the world, some of my two uh, favorite things, and that would be coffee and math because they just go together so well, you know, just like a coffee and donut. Maybe, you know, coffee, donut, and math would just be uh, amazing. But let's just keep it with coffee and math. And my uh, goal is going to be is to uh, review some random algebra concepts in the amount of time it takes to consume a nice cup of coffee. So if you're a coffee drinker, you know, and you're like, hmm, I didn't want a cup of coffee until you started talking about a cup of coffee. Maybe you want to pause this video and go to your Keurig and make yourself a cup of coffee or to your coffee pot or Maybe you're at a Starbucks on their free Wi-Fi or Dunkin' Donuts, whatever the case might be. And if you don't drink coffee, I would suggest you do not drink uh, coffee. Okay, Don't become a coffee drinker because you're going to love it so much, you'll end up spending five bucks uh, every day or more on a nice cup of coffee. Okay, I would suggest uh, becoming a tea drinker. Uh, it's cheaper and it's still very nice. Anyways, okay, if you have a cup of coffee, let's see if we can go ahead and review by the time you're down to this level of your coffee. We want to do a quick review on square roots and radicals. We're not going to be able to cover everything, but let's just review some random things just so it can be over this cup of coffee. We can increase our algebra knowledge and skill. Again, um, you know, what I'm going to be talking about here is kind of more designed to be a refresher, a review, okay? But if you need uh, further help with this uh, topic, so, you know, uh, square roots and radicals, I have plenty of videos um, in my algebra playlist, okay? Now, before we get going, uh, so let's hold up our, our cup of coffee here. Before we get going, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. I'll let you be the judge of that. You can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But I offer uh, like well over 100 courses. Um, so if you need to take a, a full math course, I likely uh, have it. And if you need help in a uh, math course, I could likely help you out. So I offer full, complete, comprehensive lessons, and I teach you how to solve the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school mathematics, uh, literally uh, um, solve thousands of problems, all video-based. Again, if you're interested, you can check out the link in the description below. Now, if you are a math student, I must give you the golden rule of math over decades of teaching math. One thing is true. Um, that I believe, and that is those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who struggle to take math notes or just don't think it's important to take math notes often struggle, okay? It's almost impossible to do uh, great in math without taking great math notes. So this is the first place you want to start addressing if you are struggling in math. Take a look at how your notes are, are or if they're anything less than excellent, you need to make uh, improvements. Now, in the meantime, you need study, something to study from. So I actually offer detailed, comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, and uh, algebra 2, and trigonometry. So you can find a link to those in the description of this video as well. So now it's a good time to take your first sip of coffee. Uh, sit back and relax, and let's go ahead and talk about square roots and radicals. We're not going. This is a big topic, but let's just kind of quickly review multiplication and addition. Okay, now with uh, square roots and radicals, there's other things we can do, right? We can take, um, let's say, the square root of eight and the square root of twelve, right? So what can we do with these two uh, square roots? And of course, these are square roots, but this is also referred to as a radical. Okay. So this is what, what I'm talking about here could apply to q, the cube roots or the seventh root of a particular number. But we'll keep it nice and easy not to ruin our cup of coffee. We don't want to get too crazy here. Keep it nice and easy to, uh, for our cup of coffee experience. So with the square root of 8 and the square root of 12, what can I do? Well, I can multiply them. I can add them. I can subtract them. And I can divide them. But, of course, we have to follow certain rules and procedures. And uh, now what I'm talking about is not going into our calculator and getting decimal equivalents and adding them up. Okay, of course, you know, anyone could do that. But we're talking about using our knowledge of square roots and radicals, the rules, okay, and rules of algebra to work and simplify 
uh, these things. So if you haven't learned this yet in algebra, then this is by no means a substitute for a full lesson. Check out some of the videos I've done in my um, algebra playlist. Uh, and if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you want to go, uh, join my algebra course because you, uh, uh, you know, I really, really get heavy duty into this. But let's just do a quick review. You probably think oh, you see, you probably thinking to yourself, yes, I remember learning this, but let's go back and just uh, re give, just do a quick refresher, okay? All right, so let's say I have the square root of eight. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 12, right? How do I approach that? Well, when we're multiplying square roots, as long as the um, what we call the uh, the index, all right. In other words, if I have the square root of eight and I'm multiplying by the square uh, the cube root of seven. I can't do that, okay? Because this little three, when a square root, you you have a little two up here. We never really write that, okay? These numbers have to be the same. So a square root times a cube root, we can't multiply, okay? At least with the algebra rules. Of course, you can you can go into your calculator and get decimal equivalents. I'm not talking about that. But if I have the cube root of eight and I'm going to multiply by the cube root of seven, I can do that because these numbers are the same, okay? So that's the first thing that we need to know. So if we have a square root and another square root, so when we, when we multiply, what I can do is I can take this, okay, these two, uh, the factors or these numbers underneath these square roots, and uh, let me go ahead and write it this way. I can just put this under one square root. So this is going to be the square root of 8 times 12, okay? So the square root of 8 times the square root of 12, I can write as the square root of 8 times 12. Of course, 8 times 12 is 96. So now I have the square root of 96. And for the most part, we would be done. But in fact, we are not done. Okay, so I don't know where you're at with your cup of coffee. Maybe you're about uh, three-fourths. You got about three-quarters left in your coffee cup. Uh, but let me, I'm going to try to get this uh, uh, little review done by the time you finish your cup of coffee. Now, what do we want to do with this? Okay. So when you're done simplifying something, you're like, okay, I remember this is the rule. We can multiply like this. Anytime you're dealing with square roots or radicals, you always want to fully simplify. Okay. So for example, um, if I, let's say I had some sort of fraction problem, I ended up with this 20 over 30 as my final answer. Would you leave your final answer this way? No, you would not. You would say, oh, that's two thirds. You would write it this way, not this way, because this is not fully simplified. You would you would reduce this down and write your final answer like so. Same thing with square roots. You got to always, always be on the lookout to simplify radicals. So the square root of 96, okay, I can rewrite it in terms of the square root of, uh, it's the same. I'm kind of going backwards now. I can write this as the square root of 96 is equal to the square root of 16, 16 times 6. So now I can break these back up. I can either break these up or combine them together. So this is the square root of 16 times the square root of 6, and the square root of 16, of course, is 4. So that's going to be 4 times the square root of 6, okay? So just a quick review on, oh, yes, how to multiply uh, radicals and then uh, how to simplify. Now, uh, let's take a look at this problem differently, okay? I'm going to just do this real quick, and then we're going to address this other problem and then we should be done with our coffee okay now another approach to doing this problem is i could simplify these individual radicals instead of multiplying i could say oh okay, the square root of eight is the same thing as the square root of four times two okay so, or the square root of let me get rid of all of this uh the square root of four times two i could break that up square root of four times the square root of two so the square root of four is two plus or minus two but let's just leave it as two so 2 times the square root of 2. Now, I'm going to multiply this by the square root of 12, which is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3. So I can say, oh, that's the square root of 4. Whoops, square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 is, again, 2. Okay, so I have 2 square root of 3. Now, what if I had this problem, square uh, 2 times the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 3? Well, how do I do this? You multiply the numbers times the numbers. 2 times 2 is 4. And then, of course, I'm going to do my little radicals here, right? Square root of 6 times square root of 3 is the same thing as the square root of 2 times 3, which is the same thing as the square root of 6. And, of course, I have that right there. 
Okay. All right. So you can go uh, individually or you can go this way. But again, multiplying radicals, just remember, uh, ultimately, you, you're likely going to have to end up simplifying. So you can simplify at the end or simplify before you get going. Both ways should lead you to the same answer. Now, let's take a look at addition real quick before we run out of uh, coffee. So the square root of 8 and the square root of, we want to uh, add square root of 8 plus the square root of 18. Now, there's no guarantee that we can actually do this problem, but this is very much um, like combining like terms in algebra. Okay, so if I have like 2x plus 3x, whoops, 3x, let me write this, 3x, that is 5x. But if I had 2x plus 3y, well, I can't do anything with this because I cannot combine like terms. These are like terms, so I can combine them. Same uh, kind of concept applies when I'm doing uh, adding or subtracting uh, square roots. Okay, but the first thing that we need to do is we need to simplify, just like as I did here, each individual uh, radical. So the square root of 8 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 2, which is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, which is the same thing as 2 times radical 2. Okay, and the square root of 18 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 2. What we're looking for is these uh, things called perfect squares, right? Um, over here, these fours, these are things that we could take uh, the square root of. So the numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, you get it, right? Things that we have nice integer values as uh, the square roots. Um, these are called perfect squares. So here, I have the square root of uh, 18 is the same thing as square root of 9 times square root of, or square root of 9 times 2, excuse me. That's the way I want to be saying it. So that's going to be the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So the square root of 9 is 3 radical 2, okay? So now this problem, you know, we're talking about addition now or subtraction, uh, is this equivalent to this problem, 2 square root of 2 plus 3 square root of 2. And you want to look at these guys here, whoops, these radical 2s, as like combining like terms. If you have the exact same radical, square root of 2 and square root of 2, I just add these numbers. So this is going to be 2 and 3. This is going to be equal to 5 square root of 2. Okay, so that is our answer. But if you had a situation, let's say I had 3 square root of 3, okay, could I do anything here? No, I could not because these guys are not exactly the same. So uh, we would just be stuck and, you know, this would be as simple as we can take it, right? Because these are not like terms, okay? Square root of 2 and square root of 3 are not the same. But if they are the same, like they are, in fact, in this problem, then these are like terms. And so we just add the, um, uh, the coefficients here. So 2 and 3, that would be 5 square roots of 2. All right, so addition... And subtraction work this way, and then we have multiplication, and then we didn't uh, talk about uh, uh, division, but division has its own kind of properties. But again, we're probably out of coffee, and I don't want to talk uh, too much more because, you know, math without coffee, it gets to be a little tedious sometimes. So hopefully you uh, had a nice beverage or enjoyed um, whatever you may be drinking, okay? And uh, the whole idea here is this. Uh, learning algebra, learning mathematics in general, you always got to be doing quick spot reviews. You probably maybe notice your teacher doing little random pop quiz questions, right? You're like, hey, why are we, why are you giving me a quiz on this? We learned this a long time ago. You know, they're giving you quizzes because it's good to do a little quick pop quiz reviews, okay? Math builds upon itself and you know, just because you mastered this stuff along the way, if you don't go back and quickly, re you know, revisit these concepts randomly, you know, you're going to forget this and then, you know, you're going to get in trouble, right? So math is constant learning, constant review, learning, reviewing, learning, learning, reviewing. That's the way you build a strong foundation, okay? And, um, you know, uh, there's nothing better than doing math than with a nice cup of coffee. Okay. 
So with that being said, if you found this video somewhat interesting, entertaining, whatever the case might be, if you liked it in some manner, please consider smashing that like button. That would help me out. And if you are new to me, my YouTube channel, uh, definitely consider subscribing. If you like my teaching style, you can already find, already find hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years. As you can tell, I love teaching math. So I've got basic to advanced math, organizing various playlists, all there for you. And I'm posting new material all the time. But if you really want to, uh, to check out my best resources, check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.